So why do we eat? Because food is great. That's certainly why I like to eat, but that's not necessarily why I guess we actually eat. Well, well, sort of. We eat in order to obtain energy to support life. We like being alive and to get the raw materials to construct things we need. The evolutionary process, however, is a very clever thing, although unintentional. And it uh, has, it's what it has done is it, it's incentivized us to eat food. Like because we need uh, matter and energy in order to stay alive, it's um, tied these things together and helped uh, recognize, or it's helped us recognize and it's given us pleasurable signals when we do eat those things. So for the most part, I guess things that feel good to us in modern day life are things that helped our survival um, previously because people that had genes that um, were more likely to, they got more pleasurable signals from eating food, were obviously more likely to eat more food and therefore they were more likely to survive. Okay, and that sort of leads to modern humans, but now we're living in a different environment to what our, uh, our ancestral past was like. So we just need to be a little wary that um, you know, our brains may not be entirely wired for um, optimal health and food consumption in the modern environment. And just a little Dwight Schrute meme there. I never smile in case, uh, if I can help it. Showing one's teeth is a submission signal in primates. When someone smiles at me, all I see is a chimpanzee begging for its life. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting little, not actually wildly off the mark tidbit. So that is sort of, I guess, one of the reasons that we enjoy or we feel safe when people smile at us because it's sort of part of our evolutionary history is tied to the fact that uh, showing your teeth is a sign of submission. Remember, we are primates. So, um, you know, it's a, it means a different story when it's a lion or a tiger or something like that. So what do we need when we eat? We are looking for six vital nutrients to make it into our cells. And this is water, vitamin, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. There's no alcohol on there, just for um, everyone playing along at home. At this level, all of these are essential. And as we go deeper, so are some of their constituents. So you'll often hear things like essential vitamins, essential minerals, essential fatty acids or essential amino acids. Um, yeah, there's certain, uh, certain subcategories of these um, nutrients that we just cannot make enough of in our body. Um, like yeah, there are certain essential amino acids um, where even under ideal conditions, your body can't make enough. Whereas there's, there's about 16 that your body can make tons of even with minimal um, you know, coming in through your diet. So for the essential amino acids or the essential nutrients um, of any variety, we need to consume them through our diet because our body can't make them. So now we're gonna get into digestion. So moving pretty rapidly here. The process of deconstruction, that's roughly what our digestion is. And what we do here is we take polymers, which are things like lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and we snip them up through a variety of different processes, deconstruct them into monomers, which just means mono meaning one, poly meaning many. And once they're in the form of monomers, then we can begin moving them into our cells. Okay, our cells are obviously very small things and they don't like to take on large molecules. So lipids become fatty acids, with some glycerol, uh, carbohydrates become sugars, protein becomes some amino acids and nucleic acids become nucleotides. And that is the process of digestion roughly. And I've said here that it is both a chemical and a mechanical process. And then I've got a picture of Jesse and Walter because 
when I think of chemicals, that's who I think of. So I'm just imagining that that's what your stomach is just looking back up your esophagus, waiting for your food to come down or something like that. <laughs> okay. A little bit more on digestion. It starts with chewing. However, small enough to uh, get down your throat is not the passing mark. We need to take a little bit more care in how much we chew. And that is often one of the simplest uh, little fixes we give to a lot of clients when it comes to fixing digestive issues. Um, it's very common for people come, for them to come to us with digestive issues and um, report of you know, gas, bloating. They may have heard of leaky gut and think they've got things like this. However, if you just encourage them to not scoff their food, if you take a little bit more time with chewing, fork down a little bit more, um, that'll really help. Like, there's a lot of the sort of hacks, I guess, to use that word um, that we talk about in regards to eating behavior and how it can help with satiety. But we also just need to remember that just regardless of satiety and regardless of trying to lose weight, there are certain behaviors that we should be doing to just allow our body to function in more the way that it wants to really, or it was designed to. So getting your food nice and small um, before you swallow it is a good idea. Then when we swallow, that is basically the last voluntary action we perform with our food. At that point, the autonom autonomic nervous system uh, takes over and we move the food down our digestive tract via peristalsis. So this is the wave-like sort of squeezing of um, smooth muscle down your esophagus and into your organs. Um, and yeah, I've just got not gravity there because I remember my nan used to tell me that, you know, if I'd eat some food and like lie upside down or something like that, like it would come back out because of gravity. But um, the way peristalsis works is that like even if you were to hang upside down, your body would still, yeah, like your food would still move towards your stomach, even if you were up the wrong way. Um, yeah, just constantly squeezing it. It's like squeezing toothpaste up a tube, basically. And then the food is further um, broken down. And this is all like all the, pro while it's going down your esophagus, it's continuously being sort of like beat up by your organs. Um, and this is all mostly done mechanically. So you've got the chewing and the physical beating it up on the way down um, until it sort of gets to about your small intestine. And this is where um, enzymes and uh, sort of like stronger stomach acids are released. And uh, this is, uh, these are all, sorry, like, degradation enzymes that come from the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder. And the, the two thoughts that I had stuck trying to come out my head at the same time there is the other one I was trying to say is the reason it's important to also chew your food um, and get it nice and small is because obviously if you chew it, then you uh, through the peristalsis process, you make it easier on your body. But also the smaller you get it, the greater amount of surface area to volume ratio that it has. So I've got that sort of mathematical principle on the right there. The smaller something is, the bigger surface area it has in relation to its volume. And what this means is you don't require as much um, of those degradation enzymes in order to sort of coat it and break it down easily. When you've got a big chunk of meat, you have to produce a ton of degradation enzymes um, in your digestive system in order to start breaking it down. But if you've chewed your food properly and you've got tiny little um, morsels of food in your stomach, they've got a massive surface area and they're nice and easy to dissolve with those digestive um, enzymes. And that, again, in part, as I was saying, is part of why you feel better if you chew your food a little bit more. Because um, if you don't, you've obviously got to have a lot of a lot more st stomach acid production. And while all of this is going on, we also just need to remember that um, 
your body is also scanning for hostile ingredients or things that really just shouldn't be there. And I'm sure we've all had that experience of eating some um, you know, food that was either ill-prepared or undercooked or something like that. And it's basically came up the way it went down. So this is sort of all part of like our, our broader immune response, you might say, just food consumption. Like your body is still scanning for um, yeah, hostile ingredients, as I said. And if it detects something that it doesn't think should be there, probably get a bucket. And now, rather than showing names, I'm actually gonna show you what the digestive system looks like. So as weird as it sounds, we are basically a tube from our mouth to the other end. Um, yeah, in principle, that food just doesn't really enter our body until it enters our cells. Like when food is going through our digestive system, although we consider our stomach inside us, because there's a continuous tube from one end to the other, it's sort of, it's never really inside us until it's absorbed through the walls of the small intestine or something like that. That's all we have time for today, guys. This was a small snippet from our energy regulation lecture, which is part of the fundamental series in our all new education portal. The portal, which is a learning hub for health and fitness enthusiasts is now live and you can see the link below for more information. Hope you enjoyed today's video and stay tuned for next week.